There's so much I could say about our little hole in the ground, but it's basically just that. No matter how you spruce it up, no matter how you decorate it, it is and always will be a hole in the ground. This is our outhouse. Come along. We started in the garage on a crummy day, started gathering all the materials and started putting everything together. I wanted to do this in a panel so we could carry it up in the boat. Uh, it allowed me to utilize my time back at the house a little better and uh, turned out to be a pretty nice project to work with my daughter. We were able to use the sawmill there and milled up a lot of stuff and had some scrap wood that we put into the project. And then always a few cans of stain sitting around. It was pretty nice working with her. This was uh, no artistic ability needed and in the end it just needed to be one color. So that worked out pretty good for us. With the platform complete and dried, we were able to get everything loaded into the boat, covered up, and prepped for the trip up. We got all the walls, the base set. After what I'm sure was a well overloaded boat, we finally got there to the cabin. It was nice to get everything unloaded, then we started walking it up to where it would sit for its resting place for what now turned into a couple years. We didn't have time to deal with it when we dropped it off. So we just staged it and covered it up so the squirrels and porcupines wouldn't tear into it. The overall dimensions of this outhouse was four foot wide by six foot long with a slanted roof going off to the back, away from the door. I had a sneaking suspicion I wasn't going to be able to dig a hole very deep, and I was right. So as soon as we were able to get a hole opened up, we got down to some frozen ground. And that's when I started a fire to start thawing things out. You gotta dig down and then we'll get a fire going. Push the fire to one side, let the coals burn while I chip and dig this side. Then after a couple hours, roll the coals to that side, chip and dig, chip and dig, and just keep doing this until uh, I get down far enough get down far enough for for the outhouse it's gonna be slow <laughs> and slow it was I could probably get about two inches a day and it just wasn't working out and then the other problem happens when you start thawing frozen ground out all the water around that thaws out as well starts seeping in your hole and your side starts sloughing away Disheartening at best, but that's how it goes when you're out in the middle of nowhere. And nobody has a lot of direction for you. Here the water started thawing and started running from everywhere. So we came up with a new plan. We were going to come back that winter and really, really finish this hole. Because I was done with everybody doing their business in a bucket. Oh, you hit water, huh? Yeah, groundwater's coming here. Not groundwater, but... All the... Seems that as fast as I bailed the water out, it all just melted and ran in from somewhere else. And it was ending up not making a lot of headway that season. So we moved on to a different project. With every outhouse, you need a seat. A throne, if you will. So before the porcupines and the squirrels got in and destroyed the remaining plywood I had sitting around, we built a throne up. Made it sturdy, doesn't bounce, and I think at some point in time we even threw some stain or paint on it. All great projects have a great crew and this is mine. Killian kept us going, Ronnie was there with drinks and refreshments, and then in the end, they're the ones that threw the stain on it, because I was kind of done for the day, I think. It was enjoyable, day was nice, wasn't overly hot, good company. That next winter I brought a friend up so we could finish the hole. It was enjoyable having them there. Okay, good morning, 21 mile on the Elliott Highway. I'm heading up to the property a week before spring break. Uh, it's March 3rd. A nice balmy 15 degrees above Ott. And uh, got my main man, Booyakasha. Regan uh, is going with me. 
Regan, Reagan, either one is uh, socially acceptable. And then, as usual, the uh, my Democratic welfare recipient, Dugan. Our game plan for the weekend is to get the snow knocked off the tent, tent set back up, snow shoveled out of the main cabin area. We got uh, got a few logs back there that we're trying to bring up, and we. Uh, we'll get the logs positioned near and if time allows put some logs up and then finally as the coup de gras of all of it I would really 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 appreciate any work we could do on the outhouse so that's the game plan we hope you have a good time we'll be doing some logs throughout the rest of the trip and as usual we'll see you on the river this was Reagan's first time up in this country so we stopped a lot got a lot of photos, made sure he knew where he was at at all times, and uh, gave him some ideas for the future on what he could go see. I highly recommend the White Mountain area if you guys ever get a chance to get up there. Reagan was absolutely enamored with how big, vast, and beautiful that country was. As soon as we got to the landing, we unloaded the machines, loaded all our materials up, and got ready to take off. It takes us about two hours to get to where the cabin is, and then we started the fires so things could thaw faster. Kept them going for the better part of a day, let them die that night, and started digging. We actually made a lot of progress. Reagan was invaluable with his help. Alive, eating food and tent. Okay, long day on the road. We made it to the tent. It's uh, was 16 above. Tent poles were up still. A um, little heavy snow load, but I'm glad we came when we did. Wood stove, the old Wilbur Brothers wood stove, fire dried up. That was pretty perfect. Um, Reagan touched my snow machine two times and broke it so there's that um, drying everything out right now just from got random chores taken care of we got everything shoveled out tomorrow's game plan is to uh, get some firewood stacked up we're gonna put some logs up we gotta get the generator going get some logs put up and then uh, just maybe explore a little bit we are gonna try and clutch start the 700 and if that doesn't work we'll be riding deuces going home and then I'll just bring tools and all the parts I need for the 700 coming back so no real crisis on that one um, got a few recoils at the house so I'll go get those man I got no complaints made it safe made it sound and uh, as usual we'll see you on the river Dugan was pretty tired that night when we got back we got the tent nice and warm and yep you're seeing it 98 degrees in the tent. It was so nice and so warm that Reagan couldn't be bothered in the middle of the night to get his ass up and put a little wood in the stove. <laughs> New guys. Home sweet home for the night. I tell you though, when the wildlife outside started talking to us, calling for Dugan, he was unhappy. Stuck pretty close to us all night. It was nice. The next day we set the platform because the hole was dug deep enough and uh, cut the hole for the throne. After that we moved on to putting a few courses of logs up. It took a while because we had to get all the snow moved out first. 
drew the logs up that have kind of moved around a little bit but then we were able to set them and it uh, turned out pretty nice good day for us I think Reagan learned a lot as well all right March 4th it's about 8 o'clock at night in the tent we uh, we put a day's work in we what do we get done cut a couple trailer loads of wood um, I think we put I think three courses of logs up four in one place I think um, packed the trail down made Killy's racetrack cleaned up the river bank dug the outhouse deeper got the fire pit to where we can move that packed the trail out up to the overland trail even harder and then uh, we spent the afternoon, yeah, spent the afternoon putting logs up. So, had some dinner, had some nice soup. We're having a uh, little uh, visiting session. And game plan tomorrow is get another load of wood stacked up here. And then, uh, if time permits and we feel like it, We'll put a log up, but if not, at a bare minimum, we'll got to get the logs moved out of the trailer and get everything packed up, cleaned up, and uh, and like to be out of here around one tomorrow. So that would put us back in the truck about uh, two thirty or three. Uh, we're gonna try and take the river, and hopefully we don't hit any overflow or anything like that. And then get back in the pickup, and should be back in town around seven or eight. So all is well. One hell of a day put in by Reagan and I, and. Uh, that being said, we'll see you on the river. Which brings us back to the very end. Reagan, you're a number one guy for helping me deal with all of my number two. You're welcome back anytime, my friend. Couldn't have done it without you. As usual, thanks for watching. Hope to see y'all on the river one day. Take care and be kind.